So the suggestion here is that all there is, is no thing apparently happening. You could call it energy. I like calling it energy. There's boundless energy, boundless, without any meaning or purpose at all. And within that boundless energy arises a contracted energy. Because boundless energy and everything is free, it can be anything. So anything can happen. It's only apparent though. Nothing is real. So contracted energy can arise. And when it arises in the human being, because it can happen anywhere, but when it arises in the human being, it brings about a, sen a sense of a center. Suddenly there's a feeling of being someone or being something. There's a sense of being something. And what follows that almost immediately is self-consciousness or self-awareness arises only at that time. Suddenly there is an, 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 a sense of individuality. And the other thing that comes with that sense of individuality is a sense of being on your own in that center, alone in that center. And so suddenly that one that is alone in that center is also separate from everything else. And everything that's happening seems to be happening to that person, you could say, or that center. And uh, as that, per as that person grows and develops, so it begins to be realized that everything that is happening to that person, being experienced by that person, is somehow separate to it. It's happening to it as, a, as an individual, as an energy. It's, that's the feeling. I am, I am, I am real. And what's happening is happening to me from outside. It's coming to me as it's happening. So the individual that is then the individual uh, doesn't really see the sky or trees or other people or have thoughts or anything like that in a natural way. It has them as experiences for it. So it experiences the sea and the sky and the trees and other people and it experiences thoughts as happening to it. They are happening to it rather than just being what they are, naturally, just trees, sky, thoughts, just naturally arising without anybody. Suddenly there is somebody they are happening to. And the feeling about that, that sense of being separate is, is different, but also unsatisfactory. There's something about it that takes the wholeness away from everything. It's as though it's a, it's a con confined, narrow world that's being lived in, in which everything that's happening seems to be happening to this individual in here. And after a while, for some people, that isn't satisfying. It's a, there's something dissatisfying about it. So they start to seek to be satisfied, to, to look for something more satisfying. So seeking is happening. And what they're seeking is a wholeness. There's something that's not whole about the sense of being separate and living in a dualistic world. It's a, it's a subject object world that's now being experienced, which is somehow unsatisfactory. And so seeking begins to look for a satisfaction, a wholeness. But because the individual is dualism and lives in dualism, it, it and because it experiences everything in a subject object way then because it's experiencing people happening to it it's the subject and the what's happening to it is the object so because of that what it looks for in, in its search is let's call it a search for enlightenment or search for wholeness or whatever you like to call it but the problem for the individual living in the dualistic world is that the individual objectifies what it's looking for. So it, it sees everything, wholeness, oneness, whatever you like, as an object that can happen to it like the sky happens to it, like other people happen to it. That's what it, that's all it knows. All it knows is that everything is happening to it. And what it longs for, what it seems to seek can also happen to it. So it can take ownership of 
wholeness or oneness or whatever you like. It can take ownership of that as it does take ownership of the sky that's happening to it, other people that are happening to it. It takes ownership. It becomes a rich person. And so when it's looking for whatever you like to call it, uh, enlightenment or, or a greater satisfaction, it wants to own that for itself. And that's what renders the whole seeking energy utterly and completely and wonderfully futile. Because what it really longs for is not ownable. What it really longs for can't be known. What it really longs for frightens it really, because what it really longs for is its own absence. What it really longs for is absence. And in absence, all there is, is nothing apparently happening. So thank you. And if somebody would like to ask a question, that would be good. I think uh, the first questioner is Anthony Lerman. Uh, Anthony, oh, uh, if you would like to, you. yes. Thank you very much. Uh, hello again, Tony. It's lovely to see you again. I Thank saw you. you about three years ago in Copenhagen, oh. and it was pure joy. So, oh, and I'm even and I'm even more good looking now. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> hello. That's right. Good. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I think you put it very well, and I and I noticed there's a question over here, which is that um, I, I understand that what is hearing this voice. Okay, this speaking that's going on right now, um, we can call it nothing. You know, it's it, nothing is hearing this. It's just being heard. But couldn't we also just call it a different label, like consciousness is hearing oh, no, this, no. or awareness is hearing it, or, or uh, I don't know, uh, energy is hearing it. Couldn't you know what's well? You could say it. Energy, it's just arising in energy, and there's. But there is nothing that's here in, in reality. There's nothing that's hearing it. It's just what's happening. But directly you use the word awareness or consciousness, as far as I'm concerned, the words awareness and consciousness are actually another form of knowing. But for there to be knowing, there needs to be a knower. So in the dualistic world, there, there probably are hundreds or thousands of knowers who know that they are hearing something. But directly they know they are hearing something, they are separate from it. This is again separation arising, which, which the seeker wants to end in a sense, because the whole sense of separation is, is unsatisfying. So consciousness and awareness of, of this voice is simply happening in dualism and can only happen in dualism, because dualism is that in which there are two. There's the voice, and there's the one that hears it. That's what is apparently happening in dualism. In the natural reality, all there is, is what appears to be happening. And what appears to be happening, including this voice speaking and that voice hearing it, is completely and utterly without meaning or purpose. You yeah. can't be there. Yeah. And there is nothing that knows it. Yeah. It's so only it's in the world of dualism that, these, yeah. that the, what's happening is known by an individual. Yeah, so nothing hears it, and you're not using nothing like a something, like consciousness or awareness. No, no. Consciousness is an act of knowing. You're not listening. Well, I'm doing my best. Realism, <laughs> consciousness is an act of knowing. When that illusion of you being somebody who knows something falls away, all there is is what happens. And in what happens, the voice can arise, but it's just arising completely on its own without any meaning or purpose. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for asking. It's <laughs> only apparently asking. <laughs> okay. Okay. There's nothing that's real. Right. Okay. Thank you. So now we have John Mark, please. Hi John. Put your sound on John. You need to put your sound, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Hello, John. How are you? Yeah, good. You? Um, no, I, I, I approach the same question last time I talked to you, so please forgive me. Um, 
And I understand, you know, as I'm standing waiting to have this question presented to you, I realize how meaningless <laughs> that, that I will never understand any of this. And it, oh, I, am, oh, good. I realize I, you're, not, you're not meant to. Right. I, I gave up. I gave up wanting to understand. Now I'm. 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 I think I'm reaching for a sense much more than anything else because I have already yeah. a partial sense of something that is bringing about this question over and over again in my mind. So I'm just playing with it. And since I have the mm. opportunity to have you here, I'm going to present it again. And that, and that has to do with uh, the complete lack of free will, so-called. That since there's no one here, there's no choice, never being, and there's never a choice being made by anyone because there's no one. Mm. However, in the appearance, it certainly appears like constantly that there are constant choices being made yes. in the appearance. Yeah. And if I heard, so far what I've heard make me, makes me feel that um, regardless of what's unfolding, happening, and regardless of what the apparent choice is, choice is um, it will have no effect on any level no, it's it's already complete. It's already whole. There's only completeness and wholeness, and no. and so, so it, it's kind of meaning. pointless. It's this pointless yeah. exercise that the body, the, the mind, the, the ego mind, you know, engage himself with with absolutely no 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 value whatsoever. No, because there um, is no meaning or purpose in anything. Right, right. So between. So again, and again, you know, I'm, I'm just rambling. Allow me, please. Um, so between someone who, do, who, who, would, who, would, who would appear to do a great deal of research of, of weighing the cons and the pros to reach a certain decision, maybe a life, you know, a, a life uh, important decision uh, to someone who compared to someone who just well, I was going to say live in the moment. There's no moment, but to no, someone who just goes but it's spontaneous, and, spontaneous. Yeah, who, yeah. Who who doesn't even question? You know whether it, it goes to whatever becomes obvious. You mm. know, I mean, a lot of those apparent decisions. I understand at least the one related to survival of the body. They happen no matter the body will. Something will come out of the body apparently that says, "Yeah, you know, choose this." this food over this or this drink or whatever, decaf or no, key, you know, this kind of, all these little decisions that happen. And I, I see how, you know, there'd be a lot of those so-called decisions or parent decisions being simply what happened. But, but no, there aren't, some of them are, what you're describing altogether, together with the person that takes a lot of time to deliberate over something and another one who's spontaneous, all of that is what's apparent happening. It's completely without any meaning. In the story of the individual, the, the individual thinks it's really important to choose this car or that car and, and, and so on, and it make, takes a lot of time to do it. Uh, but actually, what's apparently happening is completely and utterly without any meaning or value of any kind. But also, because there's, actually nothing, because there's nothing happening at all. It only appears to be happening. It's not real. There is nothing that is real. So there's only there's only a, a the even the consequence are just appearances. Totally. So there's no consequence as to you. There aren't any you, consequences. You are no, there are no consequences except in the dreamer. The dreamer who lives in the story thinks there are consequences. Right, uh, right. The, but but in reality there aren't any because there's nothing happening. There there is nothing happening. There is nothing. Happening. Right. Well, that's obviously the foundation. The the the, the it's there. Nothing is happening. But for the dreamer, like you say, with a with a part that is engaged into the appearance, there's actually a fear of consequences, which triggers the whole choosing process. You know, so I have to be careful because yeah, you know, the consequence is this body might die, this body might this, or this may happen. Yeah. Blah blah blah. But it's just a it's just a fear. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's, and it arises error. in it arises in the individual who's in the dualistic story who believes that the story it's living is real and there are 
real circumstances or consequences. As you can see in the world we live in. So, yeah, and there is, it's, there is just nothing. It's funny, you know, we, we have this, I have this tendency, this urge to want to anthropomorphize this nothing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to give to give him to 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 close it in some kind of presence some so i can't i can relate to it uh, better um okay good thank you i think thank you thank you Tony. thank you okay now we've got thank a question you. um from someone called vin de, de crescenzo sorry about my accent vin okay. de crescenzo Yes. Hi, Tony. Good to see you. Oh, yeah. Uh, my question is this. I've heard you um, share the stories of apparent people who were on a spiritual seeking path and then um, unknew the illusion of being an individual. So you and, said that bit again. They, sure. And then, the and then, then unknew the illusion of being an individual. Okay. Yeah. okay. And uh, I was wondering, do you have stories of apparent people you can share who were never ever on any spiritual path that also unknew the illusion of being an individual? Um, I'd have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to think about that. Yeah. I think there has to be some sort of sense of inquiry. There has to be some, as I said in my ordinary, in my beginning talk, some sense that being separate, being a separate individual in the in the dualistic world is somehow unsatisfactory. And that, is, that brings about a sense of looking for something else. That's happening. Well, it happens in the whole world, but people wouldn't recognize it as, as um, seeking. Everybody in the world who lives in the individual separate world is somehow unsatisfied, even if they don't recognize it themselves. And so, uh, a, a lot of people who don't know anything about what we're talking about here or anything about spiritual seeking seek a, 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 an experience to divert them away from the sense of being separate and alone. So they seek all sorts of pleasurable or otherwise experiences in order to distract themselves from the sense of being alone and separate. Okay, so uh, actually everybody in the world is a seeker. Everyone is <laughs> so so, but but the see, but the unknowing might happen despite the seeking, correct? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, totally. So, of course, so, the unknowing, uh, as far as that's concerned, has whatever this go is is going on has nothing to do with the unknowing. The unknowing doesn't need any sort of condition mm -hmm. for it to suddenly be apparent, because of course, actually, it isn't waiting in a cave to leap out on anybody. Right. There is only already unknowing. What we seek is already everything. It isn't but, somewhere to jump on us. But you did, I'm interested because you did mention that there sort of has to be some curiosity about the separation for really the unknowing to happen. So that kind of implies. It doesn't have to be, but there can be. It can yeah. be, okay. So, but it could happen even without that. It could just be the totally. normal dissatisfaction and separation. Yeah, but then you're her. implying that something's going to happen. There isn't anything that happens already. Everything is unknowing. It, unknowing, yeah. Okay. And, and all that's in the way of that is that which wants to know. So uh, it's just the individual who's separate that is trying to make unknowing happen, but can't because unknowing is all there is already. It, mm -hmm. isn't, it isn't somewhere else waiting for something to happen. It already is all there is. All there is is unknowing. Okay. So people who uh, are the par parents of people who are not actively seeking spirituality could, in theory, absolutely. Know. Yeah. Okay. I'd be interested if if we heard from anyone that that happened to, because it seems like we've never heard that. Right. But Thank what you. would that mean to you then? Uh, it's just a uh, it's a curiosity because uh, you know the idea that. The spiritual seeking path, do, you know, doesn't lead to the unknowing. I accept that, but if it seems to only happen to people who are on a spiritual path, then there's a question there to me that maybe that's not a quite, quite right. No, it, then that that implies what your feeling is, 
that the, the, this thing that you say will happen, which doesn't happen because it's already <laughs> everything, yes. it only happens in certain conditions, and that absolutely right. isn't the, because it isn't actually happening. So it right. doesn't need any conditions because yes. it is all there is. The only other thing that's interesting is I know of quite a few people who have been in contact with me who, who have suddenly come across this message, but were never, they say, they were never seekers of any kind at all, and they just came across this as if by oh, accident. That's so fascinating, that. yeah, to me. Thank you very much. Okay, so Anne Lewis, do you want to... Uh... Un unmute yourself and ask your question, Anne. Yes, yeah, so, so my question is, what is apparently happening for me much of the time is that I seem to be expected to be at work making decisions that seem to have real consequences or seem to. I'm, I'm mm. actually a doctor. I deliver babies and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I can't, much as I see and I'm compelled by the thing, I don't know how, how does, how does, how does the parallel dual world, which still on some level exists, continue well, with you in it, apparently in it, if there isn't anybody and no one's making any decision, there is a sort of, there's something that seems incompatible that I can't oh, yes, it, this message work out. Is totally incompatible. It doesn't make sense. But if you go back to the original thing that I said at the beginning, all there is is what's happening or apparently happening. And if you are making, apparently making decisions about what you're doing in your work, it's not real. It's only apparently happening. There isn't anybody doing it. And there is no explanation for that. And it doesn't make sense. This message doesn't make sense. <laughs> so, so... Does what if 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 this if this sort of uh, if the self dissolves and this happens or doesn't happen or is suddenly more apparent? Hmm. Do people continue with their normal lives That's in a usually. way? Yeah, usually, but they don't okay. continue because there aren't any people continuing. There never were any people doing what they were doing before. They just dreamed that they were people doing something before and then when the sense of self simply is no more then that doing will probably continue but it will be recognized that there's nobody doing it that's a dramatically different thing it's dramatically okay. different suddenly yes. there's a freedom in what what seems to be being, being done because there are you the self with all its conditioning and ideas about what is right and wrong are simply not there anymore. And suddenly all there is, is what's happening. It's, it's about something that's very simple and very ordinary, but quite extraordinary in is, its freedom. Is there, I, I totally get that, but at the same time, there is this weight of knowing things that seems so important in what, in particularly what I do, knowing things intervening appropriately, doing the right thing, this weight of ethics and things, no. somehow it just seems so hard to sort of marry with a sense oh, that no, no, one's, doing, no one's doing anything. No, you don't have to marry it and you don't have to drop knowing happening about something, but it isn't you that has that knowing. Knowing is what is happening. So when okay. the whole sense of you is no more, there will still be that knowledge. And not only that, it will be functioning without the limitations of your subconscious mind in the way. So there'll just be a very straightforward, simple knowing that's amazingly free and effective. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when, when it happens, give me a ring. <laughs> just, because, you will say, what you will say is, okay, Tony, I was talking to you before, and now I suddenly see that there isn't anything that's happening in terms of people doing things. There is just what's happening, and it's absolutely amazing. And I, But the only problem I have is I can't tell anybody else about it. <laughs> it can't be described. It just yeah. can't. You, I, and you were also saying to me, I can't even tell you what this is about, although you're talking about it. I can't tell you what this is like. 
it's beyond knowing. Yep. Yep. No, I get. I. 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 I, I I, I don't believe you, but I... I <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, you don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Kim Roberts, would you like to ask your question? Hello, Tim. Kim, it's Kim, Kim. Roberts. Unmute, unmute, Kim. I can't hear you. Okay. Come back. Come Can back to you. Know. you. Okay, Coco Nkrumah, would you like to unmute and ask your question? Hi there, thank you. Hi, Tony. Um, Hi, yeah. To, um, I just got a, a question. Um, um, so things are already happening. Would you say um, to, for lack of a better word, realise this, is it a sense of just conviction? Um, because obviously there is nothing to do because it's already happening. Would you say it is, because um, we're all here trying to, I guess, seek yeah, this. Yeah. Would, it be a, would it be a conviction or it, it only really feels like um, a sense of believing in it as no, something to, to realise it? So it has nothing at all to do with conviction or belief. It just is like that. There isn't anyone. All there is, is what's happening. That doesn't come out of conviction or belief. It is. It comes out of the fact that all there is, is what's apparently happening. It comes out of this. It is this. This is it already. It doesn't need any conviction or belief. Conviction or belief are, are uh, part of the dualistic world. Mm. This is just what's happening. Okay, and and just um, there's a there's an assumption here that um, when the I drops away of the self, that there's a you know that there's a feeling that as you say an energetic feeling of a center within the body around the head region like a visceral feeling. Is that something that goes away, or is it just the the ownership of feeling like your consciousness, for lack of a better word, is located? Oh no, that goes away. That all just drops. There isn't anything left, listen carefully, there isn't anything left but what is apparently happening. There is no experience and no knowledge, no recognition, none of that. There is no one, there is no one, all there is is what's apparently happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Kim Roberts says, what happens at death, please? Uh, what happens at death? Uh, nothing, really, because um, all, all the time there is apparently somebody in the dream of being someone who is now dying, then they believe that they are a person who is now going to die. At the point of death, that whole belief collapses because nobody dies at all, because nobody is alive at all. There is nobody, there is no one who is alive and there is no one that dies. Everything is already no thing apparently happening. <laughs> Go on, I feel there's more of a question there. Um, <clears throat> there is, Tony, yes. Um, <sighs> <laughs> but the thing is, uh, when I sit with you, everything drops. I'm la I have questions, but they go into nothingness when I sit with you. So no. I, I was going, I was going to ask something. So at the point of death, what's the difference between you and and uh, and a dead person? I know. Oh no, 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 no! I am a dead person. A I'm not. Uh, there's no longer a person. The person that thought they were Tony Parsons had died. Apparently, died. Is so no when, more. Okay. So does that does that mean that you your does your energy change at all? No, no. I don't have any energy anymore because I'm no okay. long, no longer someone with energy. But the energy of the body is more yeah. enlivened because it's no longer okay. expending energy on trying to be a person. That's a very yeah. wearing busy. People die of trying to be people. Yeah. <laughs> so that falls away. And of course, there's a tremendous relaxation because there isn't any longer anybody trying to be someone. 
Okay. So um, what I'm trying to feel is, so where do you reside then? Is it oh, just I don't reside anywhere. In, in energy? In, no, in no, energy? there's just energy. All there is, is okay. what's happening. There isn't anything that resides anywhere. All there is, is what's apparently happening. Happening. The reason I'm asking that is because I feel that, that you're um, a long way off from me. Although that oh, might be... But I'm not because I don't no. exist. How can oh, I be right. a long way from you? <laughs> no, I, I feel that you're, you, you've gone into the cosmos or something. Yeah, but you're, you're, no, you're not yeah. there. So now what you're doing is you are yeah. uh, projecting onto this body a sense of personhood which might be so ethereal and spiritual. <laughs> what a joke. I don't know. But it's floating around, <laughs> floating around in the clouds somewhere. The, yeah. the whole idea that there is anybody or anything that's real that's happening simply collapses and all that's left is nothing apparently happening. There is no one. Okay. There's no one anywhere. <gasps> that it's sounds lovely. good to so me. so sweet, the old ideas we have about this. I know. I like your, I like what you said there. That's good. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Um, Lee Harris, could you like to un unmute yourself, Lee? Yes, thank you. Hi, Tony. Hi, yeah. <laughs> I, I know you said nothing is real. Uh, by that, you mean no thing is real. There, there are no objects because that would imply a subject object duality. Yeah. But, uh, so my question is, uh, I know there there is being. I, I'm oh, aware no, of. Wait, hold on. What do you mean by being? Just being present, being aware, without being aware of anything, just resting in being, just being. That's present. dualistic. Well, it, it, it seems to be dualistic if I acknowledge, oh, I'm being present, but there can be, or there is presence or or being, is there not? Well, if you believe there is, then that's what you believe. As far as I'm concerned, no, there isn't being or presence. There just is nothing at all appearing as everything. For me, the word being or presence somehow applies the idea of something happening in a particular place or something something different happening there isn't anything different happening there is only no thing apparently happening there's nothing that's special about this it's very ordinary and simple when i think back to a memory obviously in the past and i say i remember that there's a, a continuity meaning the i that is here remembering is the same i that was there there's something yeah. that hasn't changed that's, that's the dualistic world in which you are someone who sits there now and remembers an apparent past someone who is doing something else and somehow there's a connection. There isn't anyone. There's nothing to remember because there's no past and no future. All there is, is nothing apparently happening, which is utterly timeless. You know, the, the mind or the me trying to think about that obviously doesn't get anywhere, but sometimes no. your words go uh, above the head, so to speak, and and uh, perhaps affect a, a change in that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. unraveling. Yeah, unraveling. That's a good word. I like unraveling. I, I got it from you. Ooh. <laughs> All there is is apparent unraveling. There's nothing to unravel. But I like the word. It's sort of sexy in a way. Well, thank you, Tim. Thank you. Okay, now Robert Blumenthal. Are you there, Robert? Yes, yes. Hello, Tony. Hello. Hi. <coughs> Why is it so sticky, this, this me energy? Oh, the me, he loves stickiness. The, the me wants to go on surviving forever. So it makes its life as sticky as possible, including even more sticky by becoming a Catholic or Buddhist. Or, 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 
Uh, could you make sure you're um, muted, please, unless you're asking the question? We've got some background noise. So it makes it, it makes its life sticky by making its life complicated. You'll notice that most religions, all religions are complicated. And nowadays on YouTube, if you want to get sticky, there are plenty of people, philosophers, gurus, and all sorts of teachers who are wonderfully apt adept at making life sticky. There's also a whole group of people now who claim to be teaching non-dualism. Yeah. Have you ever heard of anything so pathetic as the <laughs> idea of being able to teach non-dualism? Non-dualism is just a term pointing to the empty fullness of everything. It's not a, a thing. It's not a something. It's not a course. You don't, you don't say go from one thing into being a non-dualist person. It's, it's, it simply isn't like that. There's a complete misunderstanding about the meaning of non-dualism. I think a lot of people are confused by the idea of non-dualism by replacing it with the idea of oneness. There are people on YouTube who teach non-dualism, or they say they claim they do. You can't teach everything and nothing. How do you do that? But I think what they're doing is sincerely believing that non-dualism is a form of oneness and that oneness can be taught and experienced by people. So there's a huge amount of stickiness and confusion about the idea of non-dualism, which is a very, very simple term explaining that which can't be known. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if, if, it gives a, if it gives a great feeling or something, uh, it's, 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 it's just sweet stickiness. Yeah, well, you could say that. <laughs> you could say that. It's Chewing gum. <laughs> I can tell you what, nothing is very, very much no, uh, unsticky. It's completely <laughs> unsticky. If you want anything unsticky, there's nothing better than nothing. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now we've got Will H. I'm afraid I can't, don't know your surname, Will. Hi, Tony, how are you? Hi, Will, you're good. Um, I just wanted to say it's amazing how this message has lasted for thousands of years and people have tried to tell this message over and over again, it seems like uh, different. Anyway, I won't even go down that path, but um, yeah, it's amazing how many tentacles that the self has that it gets into, that it, it crops up over and over again. And um, I just found it interesting that this message, this current message coming from not you, <laughs> is uh, more about um, what is happening now and this, this is reality, and not the actual seeker. You do talk about the seeker, but um, yeah, it just seems like more people in the past have talked about how to, the self and its manifestations, but I like that this message is more about everything is nothing this is nothing and nothing is happening and and the and uh, pointing out that as opposed to the uh, illusion illusory process of the self anyway i just uh, wanted to say hello thank you for your message no, hold on hold on hold on i just want to say to you yeah that this message this uncompromising message has only been around and talked about in the last 25 years hmm. There have been hundreds and hundreds of people trying to teach what they think is duality or non-duality or meditation or whatever for thousands of years. But I challenge anybody to find a message which says two things really simply. One is that there is no one. There is no one. And the other one is that what appears to be happening is completely without meaning or purpose. I know of no other message that says this. I wrote an article about half a year or a year ago saying just that. And so far, I'm claiming and saying that, that this message is very rare and has only been around for 20 years. And, and, and I have never yet, so far yet, come across anybody who's challenged that. And it's been broadcast all over the world. So you want to be careful about what you think this message is, because it's nothing like the teachings of the masters and the right. enlightened people who are all teaching something that's personalized. This is right. utterly and completely impersonal. 
hmm. of available for anyone. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. And you. Okay, Malika, if you'd like to unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, Tony. Oh yes, we. You see that it's, it's marmalade here? I know it's marmalade already. Okay. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, I, I would like to elaborate, elaborate around trust. Trust, mm. the idea of trust, because um, I love to have, um, I, I love when you're talking about the hopelessness, the meaninglessness and the Recently, I discovered the powerlessness. So now I'm looking for to collapse the the idea of trust. Oh, you can easily. It's bullshit. Yeah, it is, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> uh, it only arise. It only uh, can uh, trust can only arise in a dualistic reality. Yes, because trust is between one and another. Yeah, it seems like. Um, People are, it seems to me like the, we're talking about glue, the, the way, the me glues, and that's the very powerful way it glues, the people yeah. all around work, uh, are going, going around being upset about things, not being the yeah. way they should be, and suspicious, Absolutely. and untrusting, and, yeah. and that's, um, yeah. that's a, a, a lifestyle, sort of, it's, it can be the only yeah. thing you, you do the whole time going around mm. finding a way to feel to, to get trust in something and there's yeah, nothing absolutely. to trust yeah it can become yeah. an obsession or what's yeah, the an obsession yeah exactly yeah it's an addiction it can be an addiction exactly and i was thinking like uh, the allegory of the the paradise the, the metaphor of being cast out of paradise the must um then i i I saw this as um, a picture of things being perfectly natural and perfectly perfect. <laughs> and mm. then uh, eating the apple of knowledge, they were cast out. Yeah. And after they, that. They then knew, yeah, they had, the, yeah. They had knowledge. Yeah. And then like going from where everything was perfect to where nothing else, nothing could be trusted anymore like a shock mm -hmm. or a trauma or yeah. whatever. That's True. how I feel life is going on a lot. Yes. Like, in, like in a constant trauma of what happened here, what happened to me how, and how can I, yeah. how can I trust this again? How, how, what, what needs to happen so I can trust this? Yeah, this absolutely. Um, mm. And it's absolutely not possible to trust anything because no, that, no. there's nothing to trust, isn't it? No, because we live in a dualistic world. Yeah. Anymore. Apparently, only apparently. Mm. The, the majority of people in the world uh, live dualistically and believe in it. Mm. And so trust then breaks down or doesn't break down because it can only live in that dualistic energy. So if this here could realize, that's my idea now, <laughs> if this here could realize that there is absolutely nothing to trust. Well, that would be still you, something happening to you. That would be an experience yeah. in, your, in your story. When you are no more, the, the whole idea of trusting and all of that sort of thing simply collapses. Yeah. But because there is nobody. I would so love that to collapse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because it's it's like when when you use I've been I don't know if you re you remember when I've been I've been asking you even in the in the meetings to say to remind me that everything is hopeless because I get so there's like. Yeah, yeah. A, a happy energy whenever you say it's hopeless so <laughs> I, would like have, I would like to have that happy energy realizing it's just mm. um, utterly well, utterly hopeless we, when we were in germany we were talking there in germany at a retreat and a, and a young lady stood up and and, and the, the result of the conversation was for me to say to her at the end 
you have to realize that your situation is completely and utterly hopeless, absolutely hopeless. And she started off, I think she, she started crying and then she started laughing. And we were told later on that that moment was incredible for her. Sort of, there was a freedom of that. Yeah, there is a huge freedom in that, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. But there's still a lot of glue around trust yeah. Here. Yeah. <sighs> oh. <laughs> mm. I'm looking forward to seeing you, Sultani. So yeah, well, that could happen. We, we, we were hoping to get to Germany later on in August, but uh, whether that will be allowed, I don't know. But you don't live in Germany, do you? No, no, no. I'm in Sweden. I'm hoping to see oh, you in, in Germany, but okay. we'll see. Yeah, good. We'll see about that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to talk to you. Yes. Mama. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, that's easy. There's a question from Alexander in Russia, who's asked me to read it out because the English isn't so good. It says, Tony, how do you end your search for your true self? It's me who always comes back and the practice also goes in waves. It turns out better or worse. And this life still looks very real and the body also seems very real. Yeah. For four years, my practice was asking, who am I? Oh, okay. So the search for the true self is utterly, wonderfully futile. There is no true self, there is no truth, there is no self, so there's nothing to look for. If you listen to what's being said so far, you would probably, or you might understand, that all there is, is no thing apparently happening. Uh, the idea that there is a true self is completely dualistic. It lives in the dualistic separate world. If there's a true self, then there's an untrue self. It goes on and on, being split into two, all the time that there's a sense of that dualism. All the time you live in that dualism, then you're living in a split world. There's no true self, there's no truth, there's nothing, there's nothing except what is apparently happening. I can't remember the rest. Okay, so Tony, you have got D's, uh, D, would you like to unmute yourself, D? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hi. I just wanted to ask you in um, being no self, um, do you, uh, is there still an experience of emotions or like bodily pain? If you cut, if there is a cut of the body, um, does it still hurt? Does it, and um, do you, does there a sense of emotions of love or? That kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm not being no self. Mm. There just is nothing left. Mm. The, the idea of even being a not self has collapsed. There is nothing yeah. but what is apparently happening. In what is apparently happening, there can be pain and, and the other things you mentioned. Anything can happen, but it isn't yeah. pain that's happening to a person anymore. It's just it's just happening. Pain. And there might be something done about that pain, but what is done about that pain is just like that pain, something being done about the pain. There is nobody doing it. It's just what's happening. I'm not doing this talk. Yeah. There isn't anybody here. There just isn't anybody here doing this. This is just a response out of nothing. This is nothing responding. And actually, strangely enough, it's nothing responding to nothing who thinks that they are something. They think they are a somebody and they're asking nothing what they should do about that or what that means. And nothing is saying to them. Actually, in the end, nothing is saying to them. There's Quite nothing. similar to night dream in that case. Uh, uh, similar to? A, a, a nighttime dream. There's nobody there, but there seems to be well, people, there seems to be experience. Maybe. I don't know. I, 
<laughs> you don't dream. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Lovely question. Yeah. Um, and then Kane Watts asks, is all fear the fear of death? Oh, well, that's a sort of question. I don't, not necessarily. I, I don't, I don't like those sort of generalizations. Fear can be the fear of being found out or the fear of being not loved anymore. Um, no, I, I don't see that. It's what happens. What happens for the individual is that a great fear can arise about not being successful or not being loved. When there is no one, a fear can still arise about anything in particular, but it doesn't arise for anyone. It just is. Okay, so now we've got Peter Hornat. Peter, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question? Hey, Tony. Hi, Peter. Um, my question is about what you said that, I don't know how you worded it, but something like this message uh, has only been around for 25 years. I'm not sure how you worded it. Yeah, that's right. Apparently. Apparently. <clears throat> Apparently. Okay. That's all I needed to hear. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's nobody's message. Okay. Uh, we now have um Shirag Archer Acharya. Tony. Hello. Hi, uh, hi Tony. Can you hear me? Yeah. We, we can hear you. Okay. So uh, my question is uh, it's not a question, it's rather a, uh, I want to share some uh, something. So yesterday I was walking on the road uh, near my house, and uh, there is an apartment near my house. It's a multi story building. Uh, and it was around eight o'clock in the night and uh, I was just walking and I suddenly looked at it and it was looking so beautiful and uh, there were all windows and, uh, you know, it was decorated with uh, lightings and everything. Uh, and then a thought occurred to me that uh, the problem is that I know that this is an apartment, those are windows, uh, these are lights and stuff like that. If I don't know them, then it's nothing less than a wonder. I mean, yeah. It... <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There isn't anything. There isn't anything. Yeah. And the other thing is that because I know that how it was built and I know the history about the apartment and stuff like this. So it, it just the beauty of that is lost in that. Yeah. But if, if I don't know it, then it's something which, I mean, is not describable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Lovely. Okay. And I have. And thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. One more thing. I just have yeah. uh, one more question. So, in your introductory command, you said that uh, uh, everything is arising. So, thoughts are arising and uh, other things are arising. Now, I can oh, understand. Pattern, pattern. Okay. Now, I can understand thoughts arising and falling, but I do not understand how sky arises. It, it looks like it has always been there. Oh, sweet. I like it. Um, it. It always has been and never has been. It's not there now. Nothing is real. Everything that is, whatever you're looking at at the moment, be it the sky or whatever, is no thing appearing to be there. It's so can, can, we, can we say that uh, it appears only when the eyes look at it, otherwise it's not there? No. It, it, no, it simply appears, it just appears. It doesn't need anything to see it to, for it to appear. <laughs> okay. Thank you there so much. No, there's no reason for anything, and anything can appear or not appear. And it's got nothing to do with us. The amazing arrogance of, of uh, not you, but the amazing arrogance of the self is it thinks nothing could happen without it. 
It's like, okay. can a tree fall in the forest if I'm not there? Mm. <laughs> You're not there. There isn't anyone. Okay. And, and one last thing, Tony. Uh, you just said that this message is uh, around uh, since last 25 years only. Uh, I just want to say one thing that uh, I agree with you, but recently I, I just came across a book, uh, which is not a very popular book. Its name is uh, 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 not the famous Bhagavad Gita, but there is another Gita. It's a Hindu scripture. It's called uh, Ashta Vakra Gita. Uh, in that book, I read uh, something that uh, those people who are trying to uh, close their eyes and uh, trying to calm their ma uh, minds, they are fooling themselves. And, uh, uh, but the only problem is that even in that book, uh, they have not said there is no me. What they have said is that that is nothing to get, nothing, no, I mean, nothing to lose. And it's already, uh, you are already that, but not that. Uh, no, so that's okay. this... yeah, but, but the fact that it says you're fooling yourself if you close your eyes is a teaching. Oh, okay. So, so even if somebody even if somebody recommends not to do meditation, even that becomes a, That's teaching. a teaching. Yeah, it's a teaching. Okay. And you won't you won't find anything in the, the open secret, let's say. And there are other people communicating this. It's not mine. It's not my message anyway. But you won't find anything in this in the open secret that suggests there's something that can be done, or even mm. suggests that there is anyone. Okay. Okay, so Tony, you just you say that uh, there is nothing to find and there is nothing to get. Instead of that, uh, can I say that? Uh, I mean, instead of saying that uh, I have nothing to get, uh, can I say that uh, uh, I uh, there is nothing uh, that I am finding? You know, I mean, because because the the way you communicate, it looks like nothing is something which I have to get. No, that's what you feel, yeah. Nothing is... Okay, you, so can we all... Uh, nothing is no possibility. There's no possibility. Okay, okay. So can I say that I'm, I'm not looking for anything? Well, you could do, but I, I wouldn't trust that because I think when you say you're not looking for something, there's still a sense that it's you that's looking for something that can't be understood. There's still a sense of someone involved there's nobody involved mm. okay. okay i can't Thank say you. i can't say here uh, i'm not looking for anything because there isn't anyone all there is all i can say is that even that is but all i could say is all there is is nothing apparently happening okay thank you thank you tony thank you very much so we've now got uh Dijana, Dijana, would you like to ask your question? Hello, Tony. Hello. Hi, yeah. Um, I, just to uh, just to follow up on the the previous um, questioner, um, the uh, the no self. Um, that's not a, that's not a new teaching. I mean, in Advaita, that no one is here. That's uh, um, so. Of course, anything that arises from a, a, a no self which is body mind, anything to do with the body mind, uh, anything that arises from a no self, if there's nobody there, then that is anything that arises from that is non-existent as well. Yeah, well, it's nothing. It's I not don't like the word non-existent. That isn't quite it. For me, all there is is no thing. And if a body appears, oh. it's no thing apparently appear appearing. But the, core, but the core of it, the, the core of it is that nobody it's and that's not new that's 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 an old old teaching that nobody well, this is uh, hold on this is not a teaching no, there no. are dozens dozens okay. of movements that say that there's no self buddhism and all of those and they are directed to the person okay yeah no i'm i'm not i don't want to uh, i don't want to mince uh, words uh, i know oh. there's uh, different words uh, can get well, we're not mincing words. We're talking about meanings. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're talking about meanings. Um, and I'm trying to get to, yeah, I know. Um, different, different speakers on this subject have different sort of um, bandwidth when it comes to word, like terminology. And, um, and they, they stick pretty close to, to their 
preferred <laughs> preferred ones. Well, I don't, yeah, I can't comment on that because I don't know who you're talking about or what they're saying. All as far as this is concerned, all there is is no thing apparently happening. Yes, um, and yet, and yet, nobody's nobody, no thing, nobody, no body mind, and yet uh, here we are having this convert this seemingly no we aren't no no we're, we're not seemingly having no, we're not we're not having a conversation you might think we are i don't this is no thing apparently happening if, with i'm not i'm not arguing at all but it, it no, feels no. a little bit like it feels a little, little bit like gaslighting uh because um i agree that there is empty that it's emptiness it is essentially inherently empty but it is apparently happening uh, and all the people, all the 300 people are also apparently um, having, uh, you know, are on their screen and have an argument. Oh, no. I agree. So, well, I mean, it is, it is a happening. I mean, it is a so happening. It's an apparent happening. Yes. It's an apparent happening. Very important, that word. Apparently. It appears to be happening. It is no thing appearing to be happening. Yes. So, but yet some there's nothing but it, if there wasn't something nothing could there has oh. to, something is present <laughs> to oh, <laughs> I mean how could how could this apparent happening for 300 people uh if there was not something such oh, as so you're so intent on there being something if you would like to be there some be so or there to be something, then go on believing there is something. No, I agree that it's not what we think it is. You ring me and say, oh, there's something I believe that was there is actually only an appearance. I agree, I agree, I, there's no disagreement. I agree that it's it's oh. not what it seems to be. It's not what we think it is. Uh, it's, you are not, you know, these characters are not us. It's, it's, it's emptiness, but yet how could even the emptiness arise in this apparent happening, if there wasn't some sub substrate of something, uh, well, because it does. The, the, what you're looking at is the, is the answer to your question. But there's nothing, well, you know, nothing is needed because there's nothing happening. Nothing is needed. But we're not crazy. We're not hallucinating. What's that got to do with it? I'm I mean, sorry, we're not we're, we're not hallucinating this. I mean. I don't know. I don't know. I'm mean, trying to. I'm trying to find the. I don't way. understand that. What's got? To, what's this got to do with hallucination? Whatever appears is no thing. You don't seem to be happy with that. I am happy with it. I accept that. I accept that it's no thing. What I, what I'm struggling, and I accept that there's nobody, that you're a nobody, <laughs> or you're not a, and I'm a nobody. I accept all that. That is all. Uh, uh, but what I what I struggle with is that even the the not the no thing arises the it, apparently in a, a I mean we're not in deep sleep. Go on, finish we're, your we're, sentence. We're not in a deep sleep. No, just having there's three hundred people. The sentence. <laughs> there's three hundred people on this call that are having this collective this collective dream like. No, no, no. This is an appearance. This is what. Yeah. This is no thing appearing. Yeah, but the, the, the fact that it's arising. Uh, it's not, it's only appearing to arise. Yes, but it is yet arising, yet here we are, yet here, here no, we it aren't. Is. No, we aren't. We appear to be. Oh, I just, I just can't, I can't get behind. You dent, you dent, you dent. Huh? You dare not. I dare not. I mean, I accept the the, the emptiness is, is crystal clear. I mean, the silence, the the no, silence. silence. No, forget no, no, no. Let me finish. Let me finish. The no. silence. The silence. No, please. Let me just finish my my sentence. I'm Here's struggling. One. I'm struggling with words. Right. So, uh, um, I mean, there's there's a silence that um, you speak of the beloved, and uh, and. There's a sense of the silence that does not preclude sound that is associated for me with the beloved, uh, that sense of the beloved, of the, um, but 
but that silence that does not preclude that does not exclude sound it, it it's like encompasses everything yet that that emptiness is still all pervasive and that couldn't that could not doesn't that sort of suggest a something oh sweetheart it's lovely give me a ring i'd love to talk to you on the phone but the, but um, I, I keep on, I'm sorry to be really boring. All there is, is nothing apparently happening. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no, it's lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Tony. Um, I called you yesterday. Thank you very much for answering my call. Um, I was reading your book um, and I, ha I, it went so yeah. Sundar. Go on. Hiya. Hi. I can uh, see you now. Okay. I have this sense of me, uh, which you said is the contraction of the energy and the manipulation of the mind or brain, as you say. Um, no, it's, well, it's good. In the end, it's, it's actually contracted energy that out of which arises a sense of me. Yes. But when I asked you, how can I drop this? Because when I read the book, I had this sense of emptiness inside me, but then it's coming back, it's coming back. Then I asked you, you said to me, there is nothing I could do about this. It's not in my purview. When I heard what you said, I feel sad and happy at the same time. Happy because I have nothing to do, but sad because there is a restlessness, you know, I, I still have a fear that I might fall back mm. because it took me a lot of uh, effort to change my patterns, to do all these jumping meditations, to come to this place. If you yeah, tell but... me... Sorry, go on. If you tell me not to do anything... Uh, no, I haven't... No. I, sorry, it's nothing I can do, is what you said. You said... There's, there no, nothing, there's nothing to do. Nothing to do. And there is no one. I wish. <laughs> uh, so yes. uh, my question is, uh, when you say the contracted energy, I have this concept of the three types of energies, like the, the, the Rajas, the Sattva, and the Tamas, you know, which you have heard about this maybe. Yeah. Uh, if I maintain the Sattva energy in my body, it's not so contracted, it's a kind of an ease energy. Do you think it will help me? No. Uh, no. There's no one to help. There's nothing to do already. All there is, is no thing apparently happening. All the time that you feel you don't know that, and that's what's happening. All the time you feel separate from what's just been said, then that's what's happening. That's all there is. There's nothing that can be done. There's nothing that needs to be done because everything is complete. Even the feeling that it isn't complete is the complete feeling, is completion. It's this. Are you still there? I'm here. Um, I'm here. I have so many questions, but I know there are so many people waiting. Well, you can a... phone, if you want to, phone me. We can talk on the phone. Thank you very much. Can I ask you one more question now? Yes, absolutely. Looking... My, um, okay. What is, is there any significance of sexual energy? No, in nothing? there is no significance. Why there is so much fuss about this then? Well, because in the dualistic world, there's a lot of fuss about all sorts of things. Somebody said earlier on about stickiness. Uh, sexual energy is a stickiness that arises in the dualistic world. It's completely and utterly meaningless. So you mean to say for you, it, this, do, this energy doesn't arise at all? Well, there is no me. All no. there is, is no thing apparently happening. It has no meaning 
or purpose of any kind. It's just what is. It is simply what is. Shall I move on? Yeah. Thank you. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you, Tony. Bring uh, me. I'll do. Okay, so William Kinnear. Do you want oh, to ask him? Yeah. Hi, Tony. Hello. How are you? Good. We, did we speak yesterday? Uh, two days ago, I called you. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to ask about was, obviously, you've talked about this. Um, you don't call it a process, but the meaning and being, the dance between meaning and being. Well, that's something that can happen. It's not a process. No, no. You haven't called it. It be a sense of meaning and Okay. You haven't called it a process, but to me, it feels like a process. Okay. Good. Um, does that have any connectedness to the final falling away of no, the self? Nothing. No, nothing does. There is no. There isn't anything that's going to happen one day, or anything that might be connected to something else. All there is is nothing apparently happening. It's not going to start tomorrow or this afternoon, it is all there is. It's all there ever has been. All there ever has been, although there is no past, is nothing apparently happening. So if this sense of a kind of the contraction getting tighter and then suddenly much less contraction and then contraction getting tighter. Is what's that apparently could... happening. And it's completely without meaning. So it's not a sign that it's going to go anywhere? Oh, no, there aren't any signs because everything is already complete. There's nowhere to go. The seeker is always looking for I used to look for signs when I was in Tony Parsons. But, but there, isn't, there aren't any signs because there's nowhere to go. Already everything is complete. <laughs> But when you were Tony Parsons, you didn't have anyone to talk to in this way. No, not at all. No. no. So what you were looking for was just what had been seen in the glimpses. Yeah. And then you had a sense I, that... I died. <laughs> it's fantastic listening to this. Oh, sweet. I'm desperate for this sense of self to fall away. It will never happen. It doesn't need to happen because there is no self to fall away. Already, all there is is nothing. No possibility. Wow. So even the idea that it needs to fall away is just part of the illusion. Yeah. The idea that anything needs to happen is part of the dualistic illusion. There is nothing. And nothing can be done about it. There is nothing and no possibility. It feels like two things when you say that. It feels like a relief and then it feels like I want control. Yeah. But, yeah. Thank you very much, though, for answering my question. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely to talk. Thank you, William. That's quite a short one. Um... Saeed Ahmed, would you like to unmute yourself and um, ask your question? Yeah, thank you. Hi, Tony. Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, it's more like the, not a question, but maybe a sharing. There's a realization that uh, no, there's nothing that one no, needs to know. There's nothing to be realized. There's nothing to be realized. It's your death. When you that wants to realize die, all there will be is nothing apparently happening. Okay. Yeah, that clears it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then it will be seen that it can't be realized. Yeah. Yeah. 
think. Uh, now we've got Kevin. Uh, Kevin, would you like to ask your question? Uh, you know what? I had one, and I'm just I'm thinking a lot, so I'm going to pass. But thank okay. you. Okay, okay, Kevin. Okay. I like your hat. Nice hat. <laughs> so now we've got um, Narva. Narva to ask her question. Hello, Narva. Hello, hi, Tony. Um, I was just, I just wanted to say, like, basically what you're saying is it's very very like simple like and easy to understand like I feel oh. like I could talk about this to like my friends or something and then be like yeah like I get that but sometimes we just like overcomplicate it and make it into like something that is really yeah. confusing but yeah. like when I when I like watch your videos I'm like oh yeah okay like I that's like I get it and then it's yeah. And then later on, like, there's like a lot of confusion and people come on here and start saying all these terms I don't understand, like, or like acting like there's like layers and oh. processes and stuff that oh. I, I don't get, I don't get that. No, but I'm yeah. yeah, because then you say that and I'm like, okay, it's fine. So I don't know. I just, because I saw something like a quote, it's so simple, but we obscure it or something. It's just utterly, completely ordinary and simple. Yeah. There are no levels. There's nothing but what is. Right. <laughs> okay. That's all I wanted to do. Thank you. Thank you. And now we've got William. Um, if you'd like to ask your question, William. Are you to unmute yourself, William? Hello, William. Have you unmuted can... yourself? You need to unmute yourself, William. Yes, 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 can't you. yes I'm oh. unmuted, yes. Okay, good. Mm. Off you go then. I just wonder what the place of virtue is in your in this in the system, whether this is Sorry. whether you what your teachings are on virtue, whether that's something that uh, is needs to be talked about or taught or explained mm. or encouraged in any way. Could you repeat the question? I didn't get the word. Virtue? Yeah, the place of virtue, yes. In, in no, your... this has nothing at all to do with virtue. It has nothing to do with goodness, badness or anything. All it is, is a, a, an attempt to describe that which can't be described, and that is that all there is, is no thing apparently happening. Is there a fast, is there a, is there a path to, uh, to penetrate? No, there's no path, no. There is no path to that which already is. Um, there is only that, and uh, I think there is a company, there is a group of people that call themselves the direct path people, but I can't see how there can be a direct path to that which already is. And if you're following a direct path to that which already is, you will go on walking and walking and walking forever. Is association with people who've association with people who have penetrated the teaching of value to this is not a teaching and it, it can't be going on it is already all there is so it can't be penetrated there isn't anything separate that can penetrate it it is already all there is 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 a uh, oh goodness so the teachings on the soul and God are not part of your... No, they're your... part of the dualistic world. The yes. dualistic world believes that there are two, God and you. That's an illusion. Can you be separated from this through... No, you can't be. You already are this. There, is no, there actually is no you. We can't be separated from anything because it already is everything and nothing. But would, would, if you were unvirtuous, could you be separated? No, the, 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 you must have heard me at the beginning to say this has nothing to do with virtue or qualities of any kind or any ideas that arise in the dualistic world about goodness or badness. This is only no thing apparently happening. And it can't be described or known and it can't be reached 
because it already is all there is. And the insight can't be accelerated or, 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 or in no, any way. There isn't anybody that has insight. It's got nothing to do with anybody. It's totally impersonal. It's got nothing to do with anybody or anything getting to somewhere because already all there is is this. So what is so, it, what it, what what inhibits the insight then? No, what inhibits the insight is the is the individual who believes that they have to have an insight in order to find something. There is nothing to find. There's nothing that's ever been lost. All there is already is wholeness. And that insight is spontaneous, I guess. That insight is based on the idea that there's something to find and achieve through an insight. It's pure dualism based on the belief that there's something to have an insight about which is something to do with what's about something that can be found there's nothing to be found and there's nothing that's ever been lost so how did you come to that insight i didn't i didn't come to it i who thought there was something to find died apparently died but I didn't, and when I, when I apparently died, it was recognized or it was realized that there was nobody to die. All there is, is nothing apparently happening. And this, uh, the karma, karma has got nothing part of it. No, this has nothing to do with the dualistic ideas of there being good, bad, karma, past lives, future lives, or anything like that. That's all based on the illusion that there's such a thing as time that's real. Yes. All there is, is nothing apparently happening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Um, and Tanya Harrickson, would you like to ask your question, Tanya? Hello, Tanya. You need to unmute yourself as well. Tanya, no. Uh, hello, Tanya. Hello. Thank you so much for this meeting. A parent meeting. <laughs> uh, yeah, my question is, you probably answered it many times, I guess. Uh, in this uh, apparent reality happening, why is it that things appear having certain consistency and logic, like if you go to sleep in London, you don't wake up in New York, etc. And it's, I, an, it's I, an appearance. The appearance of no thing seems at times to be logical. It's but that the seeming of it to be logical and, and, and understandable is completely and utterly meaningless. You actually don't go to sleep in, in London and you don't wake up in New York. You are not. There isn't anyone. You going to sleep in, in, in London is an appearance and it's completely and utterly meaningless. Um, okay. And uh, from where certain like wishes or preferences or experiences arise, like uh, I don't know if you experience any wishes or preferences. I don't because there is no one. But experiences and wishes arise from no thing. They are no thing appearing to be wishes. And they're completely without purpose or meaning. Okay. One more thing. Uh, you, you use this term sometimes empty fullness, right? Um, yeah. And the way I hear it, it suggests simultaneous, simultaneous emptiness and fullness, right? Absolutely. It's simultaneous. Yeah. One, one thing. So, yeah. yeah. So a question I have is, um, and you also say it can do, it can be anything, and it can do anything. It has no limitations, so it can contract, it can relax, it can do anything, right? Mm. So. Oh, well, only apparently. Apparently, right. Is it possible that it simultaneously has no meaning and uh, lots of meanings, or yes. that it's simultaneously not real and real? Absolutely. Hee <laughs> hee. 
So it's, both, so it's both simultaneously. Yeah, absolutely. They are one. There isn't there isn't emptiness and fullness. They are one. Yeah. Uh, be, then, the, so yeah, I can. Okay. <laughs> but, what, what, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So they are equal. Like the empty and the full are, are equal, right? Equal is another thing. They are what they are. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be equal. Mm -hmm. uh, wh why is it that when you do apparent meetings, right? Uh, why, why is it that you, mo the, you that you mostly talk about the empty part and not the full part? Like if they are happening simultaneously, like it simultaneously has no meaning and many meanings, or like simultaneously not real and real, right? And they are like completely uh, together. Yeah, like because together. that's what happens. What happens is what happens. I don't answer questions. Questions are answered. There's a discussion that goes on, and nobody has any choice in it. It's what happens. If there seems to be more talk about nothing or emptiness rather than fullness, that's what appears to be happening, and it has no meaning or purpose of any kind. Whatever said here, whatever this is, has no meaning or purpose. So, so in in when you. When talking happens through you, uh, you speak about emptiness rather than fullness because you have no choice. Absolutely. There is no one. Yeah. Um, is, is there some way to tangibly know? Uh, no. If we have a choice or not. No. no. <laughs> Because you're back to the dream. I thought, do I have a choice or not? You're back in the dualistic dream. I am real. Do I have a choice? It's bullshit. So do, do we... Mm. <laughs> oh... <laughs> Uh, you can ask it, it doesn't matter, it's all, it's all what's happening, apparently. Hmm. Yeah, uh. apparently. <laughs> but, um, but you still say someone is in dualistic dream and apparently. not in dualistic apparently. dream? Yeah, apparently. Everything is only apparent. There is nothing that's real, apparently. Yeah, but it, everything is real also because it's... No, well, you could say, if you want to say it's real and unreal, you can do it. But we don't need to get sticky, do we? No, we don't need to get sticky. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm. Okay, okay, maybe you say more about emptiness because most of the world focuses more on fullness. I don't, I don't know. There is no reason for anything of this that's happened because there is nobody doing it. It's just what appears to be happening. And it has no meaning or purpose of any kind. Mm -hmm. and, okay, just the last thing. Within this, um, when you, okay, when without having this um, sense of person, that mm, can it be that uh, like you per, like you for in your experience do you experience uh, grief or loss or sadness i don't have no, there isn't anybody here so there's nobody experiencing anything but grief or sadness can arise but they don't arise here or with anybody they just are what apparently happens and i have no meaning or purpose of any kind. But how can they happen if there would be no one in whom it could happen? The, the way in which whatever you're looking at at the moment is happening. It's an appearance, not real. Like how could be sadness or grief or loss if there would be, you know, like how it can arise if it didn't have... Because in the same way that you and I are apparently arising 
It has no reason, there is no how, it's just what apparently happens. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank, thank, thank you. you so much. It's lovely to talk to you. Thank you. It's lovely to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> Tony, it's gone half past five. Yeah, so I think that's it for me. Okay. Are you lovely. okay? Sue, so, thank you so much. A pleasure. It's pleasure. wonderful. Yeah. Really lovely. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Thank it's you. So lovely to talk to you, all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Claire, Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. Thank you. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.